All right, we had a question come in before I got started, so I'm going to post it right here, and then we're going to take questions. So the question is, hold on a second. Jonathan, the man I dated for six months just broke up with me, and I'm losing my mind help. Jonathan, the man I just have been dating for seven months just broke up with me and I'm losing my mind and I need help. You know, when I saw this question come in, I can totally feel this person's pain. I've been in a relationship where I cared about someone, I loved someone deeply and the relationship ended. And I felt like I was losing my mind. And, and, and in many cases, that's what it feels like when we deeply care for someone and they end the relationship for a variety of reasons, okay? And it could just simply be there was a misalignment. It could be that that person wasn't ready for a fully committed relationship. Uh, it could be that he found someone else. Whatever the why, I wanna lean into something deeper today and talk about this because this is so hugely important to being in your empowered self. I'm going to repeat that, to be in your empowered self. And so when I talk about self-love, again, in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? When I talk about self-love, I'm talking about being in your empowered self that has nothing to do with masculine or feminine energy. It's about being in your individual sovereignty. So how do we get there when we've gone through a breakup? How do we get to that place? And I, I think of this just like grief. I think about this just like grief. And if any of you are familiar with the five stages of grief, there's denial, anger, depression, bargaining, or excuse me, de denial, uh, uh, anger, uh, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. A uh, matter of fact, it probably doesn't matter what order it is. In, in fact, it probably is not in order. It's all chaotic. And it occurred to me that when we're in a state of denial or shock, oftentimes that's what it feels like. And I started to think about grief, uh, the grief of losing my son. You know, when I think about that first moment, I got the phone call that he was not alive. I, I was, I, I'll be candid with you. I mean, I'm reflecting upon, I was in absolute shock over this. I, I literally, it was so funny how I operated. It was like, I, I didn't operate like you think a person would have. I was literally in shock. And as the days went on, I went to a space of anger, very angry. And, and in this particular case, Connor died of an accident. And there's really no one to blame. So it wasn't like he committed suicide. It wasn't like a drunk driver hit them. It wasn't a, a cancer where I could get angry at God or angry at a drunk driver. Um, this was a, an accident. And, and so I went through a stage of, briefly went through a stage of anger. And what the next stage is bargaining. And this is where I'm, I, I started to think about this conversation this woman probably is going through because we're in bargaining. We're in a state of, you know, holding hope for the man. We, we're, we're thinking, well, what can I do to shift this? What can I do to change? And, and certainly when Connor passed away, I was thinking, what can, what can I go back in time to shift everything so it didn't happen? I went through that stage. And then there's the stage that is a depression. And in many cases, for many women, after a significant or a relationship that they cared about ends, they go in depression, which really manifests in being jadedness, jaded, uh, lonely, and, and, and kind of bitter towards the dating process and then. I'm going to repeat that. Oftentimes people go become bitter and jaded towards men and the dating process. And this happens when even someone doesn't text you right away. And all of a sudden it's Bumble's fault for all of the relationship frustration you might be feeling. Mm. By the way, my coffee mug says, sometimes you forget you're awesome. So this is your uh, your reminder. I love this mug. This was a gift from one of you fans out there from YouTube. It came in my, my mailbox at my office. I'm so grateful. So thank you so much for that. But lastly is acceptance. And why I want to talk about acceptance today is that many people thought they were very impressed, or at least I've heard this from many people, how... I shifted to acceptance rather early when Connor passed away. 
And I think about this in romantic love because ultimately if someone ends the relationship, we're oftentimes bargaining or trying to figure out, well, why, why, why? And then how can I change it? How can I change it? How can I change it? Why, why, why? Did I do something wrong? If I'd only done this, if I'd only done that. Folks, when Connor passed away, I went to acceptance very early on. And I think it's because I'd been doing a lot of personal development work ahead of time. And so there's two books I want to talk about right now for those of you to read. And the first book is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Why I love this book is that it teaches you how to talk to the voices in your head, those voices that are angry and bitter and, and jaded and bargaining and holding hope and everything else. And then there's another book I'd like you all to lean into. Whether you're in a relationship or not, I highly recommend reading The Surrender Experiment, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer, because this is all about learning acceptance, learning acceptance. And this is what I had to lean into when Connor passed away. And so for the person that wrote this message, I invite you to start leaning into acceptance as part of being your regular life, accepting that things are bad. Folks, listen, many of you on here have lost loved ones. Many, some of you have lost children. Some of you have lost relationships. Some of us lost parents. You know, when we, there's a picture of my mom and dad. And when my mom passed away, it was rather easy to accept because she was 88 years old. She lived a good life. She, you know, she, you know, it's the natural order of things. But when we invest our heart in someone, especially someone young like my son, or both my boys, I should say, it's hard to accept these because it goes against the natural order of things. And even a relationship. And I'm here to invite everyone. One of the fundamental pieces of, of inner peace, of self-love, is learning to go through denial, anger, bargaining, depression very quickly so we can come to a place of acceptance. Because the reality is, is you can talk, we, the ego, the insidious ego will try to come up with all kinds of ways to make us bad or make the other person bad. Let me repeat that. We, the ego will find, the unhealthy ego will find ways to make us bad or the other person bad. It doesn't matter the why he broke up or why she broke up. What matters most is your sovereignty, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Let me do it this way, okay? To leaning into that because that's what matters most. And when you can achieve a place of acceptance sooner rather than later, you can get back on the horse. And I remember reading a quote that once said, uh, fall off a horse seven times, get up eight times or something like, get back on eight times or something like that. And the point is, we can be bitter or jaded at the process. And I said earlier, it's a clusterfuck out there, the dating process. I get it. And also what matters most is the relationship you have with yourself. So my invitation for this person is read these books Start to lean, lean into your sovereignty, your empowered self, and recognize it doesn't matter what happens. And I do encourage everybody, if you follow my channel, to start to learn to choose better people in your life. And that starts with the very first phone call when you're getting ready to set up, a, when, when a man or woman call each other to talk about going out on a date. Start asking better questions early on to see if you're actually a fit for one another so you can have that strengthful relationship that's going to last a lifetime. And I'm just going to end on this note because everybody knows I talk about the relationship iceberg, the relationship iceberg. Here it is. And on the top, above the waterline is chemistry and attraction. And below the waterline is shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. And as you start checking off the boxes that you share the same values, that your lifestyles are blendable and you have emotional maturity, the water line starts to drop, 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 and you feel greater and greater attraction for one another. And at some point that water line is gonna go so far down that your relationship will be like a mountain. And when you've heard the saw or heard the story that men will move mountains, well, this is what it's all about. When you share the same values, you have blendable lifestyles and you have emotional maturity sparked with chemistry, you have a mountain of a relationship instead of the tip that most people focus on, 
which is chemistry. And that's what they're obsessing and chasing over is the the least, well, the, the partially the most important thing in a relationship, but there's a lot more to compatibility than just chemistry. And just to end on this note for that person that wrote, I get your pain, I've been there, and I invite you to do the personal development work so you can be stronger the next time you go back out there on a first or second date. All right, I hope that helped everyone. Thanks so much.